Hello, Rick here again with a video looking into the history, capabilities and lore behind another canonised variety of Starship, the NX class refit, also known as the Columbia class. Now, the lore around its origins gets a little hazy, but in real life it was designed by Doug Drexler as a concept for further appearances of the entitled vessel of the series Star Trek Enterprise, but that show ended before such a concept was introduced. Having said that, its introduction in beta canon is both relatively simple and messy depending on the sources. Let's get started. The Enterprise NX-01 was the first human vessel capable of Warp 5, and the conclusion to both the Warp 5 program, instituted by Zephram Cochrane in 2119, and the NX project in the 2140s. The vessel itself was a testbed for a bunch of technologies that Starfleet would pioneer into future ships such as the phase cannons and polarised hull plating, as well as extensive sensor equipment. As the Earth's Starfleet's first deep space explorer, its progress was watched by billions with interest, and the situations it encountered taught Starfleet much more about what was needed out there among the stars. While overall satisfied with its scientific utility, it was the Zindi Crisis of 2152 and 53 that first highlighted the need for greater firepower and defensive capabilities, as the NX had taken so much of a beating several times over its missions. So it was that plans were instigated to upgrade the NX design to a new model, capable of withstanding more and going further. This would take several more years, and in the meantime there were other NX-class vessels under construction, such as the Enterprise's sister ship, the NX-02 Columbia. Implementing large changes to the design was not practical at this stage, so the NX vessels were continued as they were, with fine-tuning, adjustments and upgrades where possible. It was during the mounting tension with the Romulan Star Empire that progress on this project really took off, as this led to the foundation of the Coalition of Planets in 2155, and a slightly more open sharing of technology between the member governments. But when the note-taking and research and development was eventually complete, the plans for the NX refit project had begun, even as the remaining vessels of the line were being completed. Now, there is a little bit of confusion here drawn from several apocryphal sources between one source listing that the first vessel to be overhauled with the refit project was the Enterprise in 2156, but the sources I have read make no mention of this overhaul. What is mentioned is the vanishing of the NX-02 Columbia, something that would go down in history as one of Starfleet's greatest mysteries in 2156. The ship ends up being a pivotal factor in the Star Trek Destiny books, which has since been isolated into its own splinter timeline. So the canonicity of all this NX refit stuff may be in question even among the Apocrypha as the technology within the overhauled NX ships contradicts the political landscape of the Coalition members during the Romulan War era. Nevertheless, the loss of the Columbia, its crew, and Captain, who was a close personal friend to Captain Archer, led him to petition the refit NX to be referred to as the Columbia subclass starship. The general idea of the NX refit was to attach an outboard module to the NX class, a secondary hull slung under the saucer section and connected via a neck with elongated nacelle pylons for integrity. This module was to contain a newer warp core system, which could cruise comfortably at warp 5, which still taxed the standard NX, but was capable of attaining 6.3 for around 8 hours before emergency shutdown. Other sources suggest that this was indeed a Warp 7 engine, based on the one that the Vulcans had designed decades earlier. This also necessitated the adjustment of the nacelles. The outboard module also contained a far larger and more powerful deflector dish to cope with higher warp speeds and enable the first Starfleet deflector shielding on a starship something that was much needed in the race to catch up with the surrounding powers. The first vessel to receive this overhaul was apparently the Enterprise, in which it underwent a 180-day stay at the Fleet Yard space dock over Earth receiving the upgrade. As part of the refit, 
and a formalization of the Coalition of Planets, the Enterprise was given the prefix of SS. Of course, the biggest hurdle in the notion that the Enterprise was the first to be upgraded in this fashion is the fact that when we see it in holographic form in the final episode, it is still the familiar original NX shape. So canonically, it was always this way until its retirement and this will remain a concept ship design, perhaps only used on other vessels. Unless the recording was a doctored Section 31 fabrication. Over the following years, Starfleet would continue to produce its original NX-class starships if they were too far into development, calling them in at a later date to receive their Columbia-style modifications. But by 2162, only one original NX-class was left, the Endeavour NX-06. From then on, every NX ship produced by Starfleet would be a Columbia-class vessel from scratch and included the Buran, Shenlong, Apollo, Soyuz, Ares, Charybdis, Phoenix, Valiant, up until 2167. As you may note from the dates, this passes over the founding of the United Federation of Planets in 2161, when the powers that signed the coalition fully invested themselves into the mutual cooperation and development ideals. This is where the discrepancies in the source materials come up, as the books declare that direct exchanges of technology were not done until the Federation was formed. Such an act, even with allies, would break the Vulcan's non-interference policy. It would make more sense for the NX refit program to get underway when the UFP was founded, as there were fewer restrictions in the trade of technologies. But I guess I also don't see an issue with the Columbia class having its roots in the Romulan War era either. Either way, it's a pet peeve, but it might affect your interpretation of the law. Amid numerous other improvements, the Columbia class was outfitted from the start with higher yield phase cannons and photonic torpedoes, but also the testbed for phase banks instead. As noted, the major inclusions were the deflector shielding and newer warp drive, but these were not without their problems. The deflector shielding was derived from Andorian Imperial Guard designs and was robust for its time, but was incompatible with Starfleet tech. This gave the vessel a limit of warp 3 when its shields were raised, and the problems didn't stop there. The Vulcan-made tractor beam worked fine until you tried to use it through the Andorian shielding, which threw off the targeting array. This was all part of a Warp 7 program that Starfleet had been starting up around 2155 and presumably is the technology that was folded into the Columbia class. In fact, it was Tobias Dax and his engineering team who had the monumental task of making sure all these pieces of equipment worked together. And by 2163, these issues had been ironed out removing the technological limitations of the early NX refits. In many ways, this encapsulated perfectly the uneasy formation of the Coalition and later Federation. The contributions of these founding powers often butted heads and had numerous issues with one another. While together they still produced something greater, it was not until they began to cooperate in earnest that the Columbia class, like the Federation itself, became greater than the sum of its parts. We have no word yet when the Columbia class was finally decommissioned. The SS Enterprise NX-01 was turned into a museum ship on the signing of the Federation Charter, but the Columbia would go on to serve the UFP Starfleet, with all vessels being rebranded with the now familiar USS and NCC registry. This vessel answers a lingering thought I had for ages that was why the shape? Ships like the Constitution class set the precedent for this iconic Federation silhouette, but why that particular shape? This stepping stone between NX and Constitution gives us that answer, and established the look for what constitutes a Starfleet design going forwards. Completely into the realms of non-canical additions now, we also have the 2280s variant of the Columbia class, which is an overhaul of the Columbia design to fit with the newer Federation design style. But even in the source material, Star Trek Online, it calls it a concept vessel despite being able to fly it. 
The Columbia class, or NX Refit, remains one of my favourite ship looks for the missing link factor it has in Starfleet history, and I would have loved to have seen it on screen. Considering the level of appreciation this ship has, I'm apparently not alone. Of course, this is come about to the forefront due to the single model on the desk of a young Jean-Luc Picard from his childhood, but I'll take it as an opportunity to talk about one of my favourite ships. For more on the era when this ship would have been debuted, you can check out my early Starfleet series which covers various aspects of the post-Enterprise Apocrypha. Until then, thank you for watching this video. I've been Rick, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.